Welcome back to the Teradek booth where we're doing an NAB 2004 live streaming show. I'm Deborah Kaufman, Associate Editor with Broadcast Beat. We've just heard about 4K from end to end, from camera to, to post, and now we're going to take a look at Adobe and the, everything that Adobe is offering on the NAB floor. Uh, we have two people here from Adobe, Patrick Palmer and Michael Lewis. Hey. And Patrick, why don't we start with you and tell us a little bit about, give us the big picture, the overview. Uh, Adobe's a big booth, it's a big company, a lot of products. Oh yes indeed. It, what's, the what's the big picture story of what it, Adobe is Well, we're really there? excited to be here. You already mentioned 4K, and if you look at our products and what we did throughout the last couple of years, 4K is really not new to us. So we're hugely excited to see the industries moving this direction, embracing everything that really makes Ultra HD 4K. That would include more pixels, I guess, for a lot of people, but it's also uh, wider color space, more high dynamic range, all the things we actually really care about, and all the things where Adobe has huge legacy with all the other products we're doing on Creative Cloud. Like if you think Photoshop, <laughs> you can imagine that uh, for us it's exciting to see all these things where we have core knowledge uh, coming to a digital cinema and, and broadcast as well. Right. If we're talking big picture, uh, we're excited to show the next major update to Creative Cloud for video. So all the video products are going to see a major update and we're re revealing that here, showing the products at the show floor. Um, so that ranges from story, prelude, going to Premiere After Effects, all the way to Speedgrade, Media Encoder, and we also have an update for our audio product for the Video Space Audition. So really, um, great updates all the way through, and you'll hear us sing the song of integration here, because that really is where we see the value. We went from products to suites, and now it's Creative Cloud, meaning all of our customers are getting access to everything, enabling workflows that just haven't been possible before, really, with so many people having access to the products, being able to actually see the other end of the workflow, even though they might be specialized in one thing, they have access to all the other products and can easily tap into whatever is done next or before. So the integration theme we're doing here, and we can talk about more um, about the specific products, but a lot of things are actually done, so something that used to be heavily specialized is now available, for, ex for example, in uh, Premiere in a much easier way, presenting interface that used to be ultimately complex in After Effects, allowing you to do things that you do every day without needing a motion graphics artist to tap into it because he's doing the template and you're doing just a little bit of you know, new text here. Mm -hmm. We have a feature called Live Text Template that does just that, so I have an utterly complex structure in After Effects that I don't understand, but I can easily change the things that I need to for my lower thirds in Premiere now because we extended it to that. So a lot of features like that, integration is well, really the big thing you for know, us. You know, it's, I mean, you talk about integration. I think it is so interesting that in today's market, I, I, I sense that that's really a trend at the show, that people yeah. really want integrated products where they can go from soup to nuts, from beginning to end. Um, that you know, workflow is, 4K is certainly the buzz of the floor, but so is, workflow's been a buzz for quite a while. Yeah. So this is clearly uh, responding to a demand among your users. Absolutely, and yeah. it only makes sense. I think we're in a unique position because we have so many products kind of covering you from really beginning to end. We don't do everything. Obviously we have partners everywhere that kind of tie in with our line of products and give you extensions wherever that you'd need to, but for the core, things that you do really beginning with writing the story until you actually produce the final output, produce a package and actually give it to your client. We've got so many building blocks along the way, just really helping you to do things more efficiently. Um, with the budgets coming down more and more, we all know that that's a fact, right? You just mm -hmm. got to be more efficient, just got to be able to get the talent which is another thing, by the way, that we're uh, doing and, and proudly doing. Uh, Anywhere has seen a major update, too. Um, and well, I do want to talk about Anywhere. We'll talk about that later. We'll talk about that in just a <laughs> second. But I thought that since we are talking about workflow, right. let's Why kind of we walk start through with the workflow the and workflow. we'll start with Michael. So Michael, <laughs> talk about the products and you know where they fit in the workflow. Sure, so um, it's interesting as we were talking about this, I, I, I my job title is actually product manager for pre-production workflows. Aha. Okay. So I'm at that beginning side of the workflow story that we have. And um, so one of, the, one of the applications I have under my belt is the um, Adobe Story CC, um, which is the, our hosted script writing and collaborative script writing uh, application. And um, from there, we have the ability to come into Prelude or Premiere um, with speech to text analysis and actually bring that script into the into the post-production workflow, apply it to the video, and use that as metadata. Um, but then again, we're also still pushing in different areas to be kind of at that forefront of the workflow. 
So uh, at IBC uh, last year, we introduced Prelude Live Logger, which is a great little iPad utility that allows you to log. It's kind of like your note taking uh, without having to have a piece of paper and a pen, but be able to do it digitally. And then send that log, whatever you've logged, whatever notes you've taken about the event you've been watching, that you know video is also happening at the same time. Send that log up to the Creative Cloud, bring it down into Prelude, and associate it with the video that was taken at the same time, based on time code or time of day, or simply a clap marker. Um, and that's been an incredibly, um, it, it's actually been amazing to us how well that's taken off because it really saves time in a, at a key point. You don't have to take written notes into an editor, have them look through the notes, try to read your handwriting, and find your, the shots and make selects and do the edit. They're actually able to very quickly create markers based on those notes and very quickly say, okay, these are my shots, these are my circle takes. I can now start making selects, making a rough cut, and moving on to the fine craft editing and on from and there. And how do you enter those notes? I mean, is it, uh, are you? It's, it's actually, it's really simple. Like from the iPad, you simply select a log that you've created as you were logging something, you save that, and you upload it to the Creative Cloud. From Prelude, you can, within Prelude, connect to the Creative Cloud and download that log. It's in our XMP format, which is a, a metadata wrapper and it's an open standard, and bring, bring that down into Prelude, and in a panel say, these are my logs, these are my clips, simply apply these clips to, uh, these logs to those clips, and it will automatically marry the two and align them according to whatever choice you've made. Yeah, that's pretty fantastic, and obviously there's a huge efficiency there, and efficiency exactly. does seem to be one of the key words that people are looking yeah, for in workflows. It's, it's very much what we looked at coming into this release. Um, in Prelude itself, we really wanted to make some of the workflows, our key workflows, more efficient and more intuitive for users. So things like doing ingest, we have more information there, we have more ability to apply metadata that is entered at the ingest point. Um, to all the clips, whether they're coming in for edit or for rough cut, or whether they're being saved as backup, but you always want to have that information carry with those files. Now, um, you know, it's interesting to me because pre-production seems to be something that people are putting increasing focus and importance on. Now, I could be wrong about this, and I'd love your feedback, but it seems to me that the more people consider workflow in general, mm -hmm. that the you know, the, that, that the pre-production phase has really gained in importance. Do, do, do you feel that's true We've from got, your experience? Yeah, for sure, we're getting a lot of feedback. We're, I mean, I feel like we're getting a lot of adoption as uh, Prelude because, and Prelude Lilogger, because what people are looking at is how far up the chain can I start getting information into these clips so that, because everything is file-based now, I don't have a tape that I can write something on and pass along to everyone. That's true. I've got these files that I need to somehow make sense of as they move through the, my production pipeline. And so we're really getting the feedback that the, the more you can make this easier for us, the more you can make it um, upstream so that it carries through and, and in a way creates a workflow that has its own high IQ as it moves through. Um, the easier it makes, and the more efficient it makes our workflows and our productions, and, the, and, it makes, and that means saving money, that means um, making it much easier to get quality productions out, you know, um, in a very smooth and efficient manner. You know, the thing that I'm hearing which is so interesting is frequently when there's some kind of new utility, new application, you know, you have, you, manufacturers have to spend a lot of energy educating people mm -hmm. as to how to use it. But it doesn't sound like you have to educate people about pre-production, it sounds like they're just exploiting it to the max. Sure, no I agree, I think that anything that, that we can do, and we are, we're always looking at ways to, to really enable our customers, um, anything we do, especially in pre-production, I think is, is people are just picking it up right away and, and running with it. Like I've been surprised at the ways that people have used Actually, the that was going to be my very next question because I know frequently, I always like to say a, a product goes through two creations. One is the manufacturer creates it and secondly, the customer recreates it. Right. So what have you, what have been the surprises? What have you learned? What have been the new things that your clients have done with the product that were, came as a surprise, perhaps? Right, um, well, I'm trying to think if I can, I, uh, unfortunately some of these things are like, I can't actually you tell, can't tell you. Them. <laughs> <laughs> right? Which is always hard. They don't want to give away their I, secret sauce, I wanna, right? I, I'd love to like <laughs> sing it to the wind, you know? Um, but, <laughs> but you know, I mean, I think that it, it's gone out, you know, I know that LiveLogger has been in Africa for, you know, logging some wildlife type things. I know with, you know, and, and I know that it's been, um, you know, used um, for very fast daily shows. 
that which actually surprised me because we always, we originally thought it was going to appeal mostly to sports. Mm -hmm. You know, because it's like you can sit at a sports right, event and you can sense. sit there and you can log something and then you can send it in and you very quickly get, you know, the the highlights from the event. Um, so the use of it for fast turnaround daily shows was really an exciting thing to find out about and I actually spent some time on on set with the production creating templates for them and saying and and learning what they were doing so that I could come back and say, oh, right. if we do these changes or if we make these you know, efficiencies here and here in our products, I mean, we're going to see this thing take off in all these different directions we never exactly envisioned, you know, I so. Think to a large degree, we actually don't really know uh, of some of the magic that's done with the product because it's so customizable. I think one of the things that's really outstanding uh, about especially live log or the iPad applications that you can do about anything that you can dream about in terms of getting metadata into the pipeline. It sounds so dry actually, right. but once you see it, it's actually too bad we don't have it here. Well, you know, it's, you kind, know? Of, it's <laughs> kind of tantalizing because I think what it shows to potential users is, you know, hey, I can't tell you all the exciting, interesting things people are doing with it. Why don't you try it yourself? Go, go out and, and try it yourself, try yourself and, and see and what you see, can find. See what you want to do, see right. what you can well, find. Well, Deborah, you, you're doing the teasing for us, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> 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 all right, so here's the good question though. If, if, pre, if you're offering all this power in pre-production, which is you know, going to be new and which is highly customizable, how is that impacting the, the post workflow downstream? And perhaps that's a question for you, Patrick. It has huge impact because what we've seen before doing Prelo is that people basically have handed things to post-production that came in any shape or form that was bluntly unusable, right? Right. So it had to be re-entered, recreated. More often than not, I think you've experienced that throughout your career, you've seen it all the time, that there's valuable data, but it doesn't make it to the next stage, right? right. That's what we've right. seen. Right. And obviously we could have said, let's extend Premiere a little bit, but the thing is, if you have something for doing editorial, and it does serve that purpose so well as it does now. I mean, looking at Premiere and where it's coming from, where it is today, we're, by every study we're doing, on top now. We're number one in perception, number one in usage, number one in minutes produced with the product every day. So that's exciting to see, but you don't want to compromise that by saying, okay, let's add more user, user interface to it that's confusing to an editor at the same time. And that I think, to me, that's really the kicker. The editor wants all that information. So how do we present it to mm -hmm. the editor? And, and that's the sweet thing. Premiere actually has seen lots of extensions because we have what we call the panels and Prelude is taking advantage of that as much as a lot of other applications. We have around 200 partners by now. I right. think uh, it's beyond 200 officially this show. So this show. is the synergies of the integration that, is the that you're synergy, talking about. the synergy, right? So right. what we built for Prelude to be able to push more information in, the same thing is true for Story, where we have the storyboard available in Premiere. So you have all that information available catering to the editor's needs. So it's not everything. It's what you need to see from it and you can easily filter it. So all of that is present. You can attach it to your work, you actually can see all the markers created in Prelude and all the extra information that's there about, for example, the director not very much liking a particular take, you might not want to take it, right? So right, right. All that info is there uh, carrying on throughout the production pipeline. And I, th I think as much as initially that all sounds dry, once you sit in front of it and, and see how much faster you can work because whatever else had been there before you, and that's reality, right? We're still not just, you know, it's not a one-man band operation for 99.9% of all of us. Um, so, <coughs> as long as there's collaboration, it's so cool to have everything from beginning to end carrying through, not losing anything, because not on a piece of paper that didn't even make it to the editing room. You know, it's so interesting, and I think that may be the value added that is really, I mean, Premiere is clearly on a roll. Now, you know, and I followed Adobe for many, many years and followed Premiere for many, many years, and you did have some obstacles to overcome when you came back into the marketplace. Absolutely, sure. And, but my, you know, my barometer is I, every <laughs> year, before NAB, I host a program at Editor's Lounge in Los Angeles, mm -hmm. and, you know, we often, we talk about editorial tools, and, you know, up until just a few years ago, we, you know, we'd say, How, who uses this, who uses that, and there were only one or two hands for Premiere, right. and this year, it was quite a sizable number of people. Well, who raised we're just their thankful hands. for our customers pushing us every year towards where the money is for them, and that ultimately makes the product so much more successful. We've had just we've been fortunate to be working with really some of the best people in the industry, and you uh, hear us talking about something that is really hugely exciting to all of us at Adobe. Um, Fincher actually did a commercial last year already, which we were yes. talking about, but most people said, okay, well, that's a couple of seconds. How about doing a feature film? And, and, and <laughs> so that's what he did, that, or yes. he's doing now. So he's editing Gone Girl, and that's uh, all the way through a premiere production pipeline, all premiere based. 
Uh, it's all 4K talking about high resolution. So, um, and that gave us a nice push towards getting more features and that are just hugely important to, to this type of demanding customer and obviously everybody else benefiting from it, right? So well we're I getting good pushes from our you customer. Are, that's we're a really very, very good that. push to get. And I know a number of years ago, the, the, the Baja uh, racing documentary, Dust to, what was that documentary oh, called? You know the one I mean. Dust to Glory. Dust to Glory. And that was cut on premiere and yeah. I remember, you know, I remarked, aha, okay, yeah. you've hit a milestone here. But David Fincher, I would say that's another kind of milestone yes. and that's a fabulous <laughs> thing. It's certainly a great moment in the history of Premiere, yeah. So are, is Premiere offering any new tools at NAB 2014? Yes, indeed. Do and tell. I can sing more of the integration song right here. <laughs> well, that's what, that's what the theme is, isn't it? It really is. Um, there are actually a couple of products feeding into Premiere more and more, so the general setup is more like Premiere really is now the hub, and that's very clear to us at Adobe because that's what our customers are telling us to do moving forward. Make it the hub for everything, make sure whatever I need feeds into it so nicely that it is as seamless as possible. So one of the new features I already mentioned, which is live text templates, to explain that with a little bit more detail, so you can have something that really is very complex in After Effects, nicely animated lower thirds, um, and you have various text elements in it, but it's kind of hard to find that in 100 layers. Mm. <laughs> So what we did is we moved all the technology into Premiere so you can pipe in the After Effects comp, but you get all the text elements presented to you in the effects controls, none of the rest of it. So it's not like you'd be doing all of that that you have done in After Effects before, but you will touch all the things that you need to change frequently. So you don't need to go back and forth anymore is the story here. So one of the things. The other thing that we brought over from After Effects, there's good cross-pollination here in terms of technology. We've had masking, tracking in After Effects, and recently that's seen a, a great update, uh, I think as of October. Uh, we're bringing that technology now directly to Premiere. Mm -hmm. and the cool thing is, you might use that for something really simple like blurring a face, which you're legally not allowed to show, or number plate on a car. But once the masking and tracking is on the Premiere shot, and you realize, oh boy, I need to do something else where an After Effects tool will get me there, you can actually bring that shot into After Effects and you don't need to do the mask again because it's the same technology. So we're bringing the masking, the tracking over. You don't waste any time recreating something that already did exist. You know, this is such interesting stuff. Our time is now over, which is so frustrating. <laughs> we didn't get to talk about speed grade, but what I recommend to our viewers is either head to the booth if oh, you're here at NAB, yes. or head to the website if you're not at NAB. We have some great overview videos up right now. But I think what we've shown is that workflow is king and that th this integration in the cloud, Adobe Anywhere, is really what's making it work for your clients. Thank you so much thank for coming you. by. Thank really, you, really, really appreciate it. Pleasure. And thank everybody for watching our Tuesday show of live streaming from the Terra Deck booth. Tune in tomorrow, we have some fabulous guests tomorrow, Blackmagic Design and others. Till then, have a great show.